are at it again. Another something for the tablescape. I have several more elements that we're going to add and then we're going to put it all together and I will finally get this vision out of my body, I guess. I'll tell you guys more about it at some point. But anyway, we're doing vases. So I love the idea of quilted vases, quilted art, that kind of thing. So I've got a couple of different books. Believe it or not, these two are by Fabric Cafe's Fran Morgan. Love these. These were the first ones that I got. And then I got into Linda Johansson's book. And that's really the technique that we're going to be face that we're going to be doing. Um, Franz is a little bit different, and we'll probably get around to that too at some point. But once you get the idea of this, the world is at your fingertips. You'll be able to make so many different types of vases and so many different types of sizes. I'm going to show you two different types in this video. Very, very simple. The first thing I'm going to do is go cut my fabric and cut out my patterns. This pattern was found on page 46. And then the other pattern that I'm going to do, I'm just going to go rogue. But this is the pattern on page 46 that I'm going to be working with first. So I made two copies of the pattern on two, you know, sheets of paper. I cut out the big one, cut out the little guy right here. And now I'm just going to take this big one. I know that it measures nine inches wide, and so I'm going to take it and I am going to fold it in half. There we go. That way I can somewhat fussy cut this even though I can't see exactly where I am going and what it is that I want to capture here. I don't necessarily care about that heart at the bottom, but I do want that queen, the, the queen right here. So I can get it here using the heart as the center. Mm -hmm. I can get that there. I don't know if I will be able to get it over here too. Ooh. It just squeezes by, I think, I think. Using the heart is center, it's over. The queen stops right there, that's fine. I'm just gonna mark that and see. Yep, nope, cannot gonna have to jump over to another one that's why I bought so much of this fabric <laughs> so some areas are gonna work some areas are not it's fine by me I'm I, this is why I bought all this fabric and I realize I'm making Swiss cheese of it but I don't care because this is why I bought all this fabric for this project so I'll be able to take that one and then none of the rest of them will be usable but I have tons more so it's not a problem I need four rectangles um, that are nine and a half wide by how tall is this guy? I think this guy is seven. Are you seven inches? About seven and a half tall. So I'd like to cut all of these by nine and a half by eight. You guys know how I roll when I fussy cut. I like to give myself a map with painter's tape. I wonder what the other one is. The other one has tape on it already. I don't think it's nine and a half by eight though. So we're just going to take this and I'm going to move it to nine and a half. And we said by eight tall. This does not have to be perfect, but we are going to just do what we, you know, we're going to do our best here.
Well, where's my rotary cutter? Oh, I know where it is. Now I'm going to fussy cut that fabric. I have these very expensive ruler stickers. They can, you can reuse them though, so maybe that's why they're so expensive. <laughs> they're eight dollars. I don't. I always say they're super expensive. I don't feel like that's so expensive for these. I don't know how many you get in the pack, but I use them all the time. But I do reuse them too. So how about that? So because we did actually, that's wrong. We did nine and a half. So we're going to go four and three quarters, which is this line here. And then I'm going to go down to four. And this should give me the center mark. And I just put it at a diagonal to that intersection. So that's four. And this is four and a half, three quarters is right there. And that's going to be the halfway mark. So I can find the halfway mark on all my queens and put her face there and cut around and that'll tell me if I have enough fabric to do what I need to do, so on and so forth. And just to measure, that gives us quite a bit of, oh, we could have gone to nine. We didn't have to go to nine and a half. No, we needed to go to more than nine because it's more than nine. It's like, right, I could have gone nine and a quarter, whatever. What? Mm, ever. Eight looks a little, it's an inch. We'll be fine. We will be fine. So we've determined that I'm using the heart as center. So I just put the four and a three quarter mark there. And I can see that kind of puts the center above her eyebrow. And the four and a quarter mark kind of goes up through her crown. So I've got a couple of places where I can just do a couple of checkpoints to make sure that this looks good. And then I I'm going to take this guy and put it on the four and a quarter mark to kind of see. And that looks good too. I know that I'm getting the whole queen, the whole cue there, which is the most important thing to me. And I'm good with that. So I am going to take two cuts, one up this side one across the top and then we are going to I really need to cut all this down but whatever we can just cut this off here I'm going to flip it around. It's going to look funny, but it's not a big deal. Straighten it out. Grab my ruler. Right side the same way it was. Get this piece out of the way. And I'm going to sit this corner right in this L, this L right here. I'm making sure that it is lined up properly. Doing a little nudging as much as you can with the quilter select because you really can't nudge with the quilter select, which is why we love them. And that looks good. And I'm going to take my cuts on the right and then the top again. And now we have a fussy cut piece. And now for the most part, I mean, I could be more exact, but for the most part, all of my vases will look like this. Yep. All right, let me keep going. So now that I have all of my pieces cut out, my fabric pieces cut out, I'm going to cut out this fast to fuse, which is a double-sided fusible interfacing. This is the thickness. 
it feels like something that I felt for Pellon, but supposedly they're different and this one is better. So, okay. They say this one steams out better, supposedly. So I had to have that and I got that. It's from, it's by CT Publishing. I got mine off Amazon, of course. So I'm just going to cut this slightly smaller than the other pieces that I cut. And remember, if you were only, you only need one piece for the circles. So you only need one piece, right? Um, for the other ones, I'm going to need more. But for the circles, I just need one piece because both sides are going to, you know, be covered. So I'm going to cut this just a little shy of what the other piece was cut so that we make sure that we get it all the way to the ends. So if I cut this at nine and a half by eight, let's go eight and three quarters by seven and three quarters. Yeah, that feels right. And I'm going to take the cut. And there we go. I will place that like that. And then I will put the backing fabric on it. And fuse that all together and then I will cut out my shape that's the plan so I have my back piece and I actually cut my backing piece kind of funky so this is how it probably should read <laughs> however my back piece is gonna this is just a lining so you get what you get. You don't throw a fit. But if that's going to bother you, pay attention. And if you're doing this exactly like me, that happened. So I'm just going to give it a little press really quickly. These were pressed with starch. I'm going to take my interfacing and I'm going to place it on here. And it is just an eighth smaller for the most part all around and then I'm going to be sure to cover it up with this front piece and I'm going to hold the iron on this for five seconds once I get it lined up where I feel comfortable and I'm going to hold this down there for five seconds just to tack it down All right, so that's five seconds there. Then I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. Then I'm going to bust out the clapper and I'm just going to hold that on there until it cools. After it cools, I'm going to spray it with some water and then I'm going to press it just the same way I just did for 10 seconds and then it will be stiff as a board. Super, super thick, super stiff and it's stuck on really well. 
no bumps and lumps or anything. This fast diffuse is all right. I'm really going to know when it comes time for me to smash it and all that kind of stuff and see how it holds up. But as of right now, I'm really pleased with the way that it's, it looks. Ten seconds now. Now I could have done this a whole lot faster in my heat press, but everybody doesn't have a heat press, so I decided to just go on ahead and do this the traditional way. But if you've got a Cricut heat press or a clamshell or a swing or swing away. This, this will get it. This will do it. Then I'm going to hold this on here until it cools. Then I'm going to flip it over, do the same thing, and then I'll be done with that. So now it's time to get to shaping. So I'm just going to kind of line this up the best I can. And then I better throw some pins in here. I should have done this on freezer paper. So that I could have just ironed it on and then cut it out and then peeled it away and kept going, but whatever. I just want to feel around it and make sure we have interfacing all the way around so I'm not missing any of that. And then I'm just going to let it go and, and let it be whatever it's going to be. Um, I'm going to stick a pin in there like that because the pins do not want to go through this stuff. I mean, I could make it, but I really don't want to. I just want it to stay. I'm going to go straight across like this. And of course I just gave my pattern a little haircut because that's who I am. I do that all the time. I'm probably going to have this made into an acrylic. I found another acrylic dealer since the guy who I, he just ghosted me. I don't know what happened there, but the guy I was using before, well, but I found another place. So yeah, we'll do that. And then I'm going to go around this curve nice and easy. Nice. That looks pretty good to me. And then we'll turn it around and do this side. And we get to do a reveal and see what we got. And we got a cutie patootie. Looks good to me. I've got to do this a couple more times because I'm doing two vases that are this shape. And then I will um, show you the next shape that we're doing. So for our other vase, we're going to do a bigger vase, and this is going to be a hexagon, which goes with the hexagon fabric. Love that, right? And I just cut out a hexagon, and now I'm getting ready to cut it down the same way that we did the other shapes. Nothing special here. And now I'm just going to cut down this very last side. And there we go. 
have a pretty decent looking hexagon there. I don't know why. Do I want to just, I'm just going to shave that because that's probably going to bother me. It just got a little funky right there. All right, there we go. It's a little tighter. And there we have that shape. Now, this one we're going rogue, like I told you. I am going to cut down some strips. that are the same width as one of these sides and that comes to three inches so this whole thing measures like five five and a quarter and that gives me three inch sides so i'm going to cut down these sides to be three inches i just did like a 12 by 12 kind of shape here a square and I can feel where the, the the thing stops and the fabric stops. So I just want to cut that off and then start cutting my three inch width. And you know what? I think I'm going to take this down to, I think I want the vase to be 10 inches tall. I don't want it to be 12 inches tall. I know that for sure. I think I want it to be 10. Yeah. And I want it to go, I don't know, I'll figure it out. But I'm just cutting these down to three by 10 inch strips. So here is how this is going to look. I know, I probably should have just made it all the pink, but I don't wanna, <laughs> I just, I don't know, I don't wanna, so I didn't. So that's what that's gonna look like. And it's all gonna be built on this bottom piece right here. So now we get to do the fun part and we get to cord everything. So what do I mean by that? You guys have all seen this cording. I don't really know what people use it for, if I'm being honest. Just, I don't know, maybe lacing up the things. I don't know. But I'm gonna take it and I am going to wrap it around the outside of all the pieces. And we're gonna do that and attach it using a zigzag stitch. So I'm going to zigzag stitch this and I'm going to wrap this all the way around with a coordinating color to the cord. So I'll do a purple and I'm just going to zigzag all the way around. I'm going to leave a little tail there and I'm going to come all the way around. And we're going to end. Actually, we're going to start at the bottom because you want to start someplace or inconspicuous. But we'll start at the bottom. We'll leave a tail. And we'll go around and zigzag this whole thing. And we're going to do that to every single one of our pieces. All of them. So this, <laughs> that looks funny. These pieces here. All right, to get this going, we are going to add this cording here. And I'm just going to... Hold that taut with my hand and put this dead center. I'm going to add this right here. So I'm making sure that the edge is center with the, the foot. And I'm trying to get that to curl around nicely. There we go. And I'm going to put that down. Lift up that needle so I can get it right in there under that needle. And we'll drop the foot and we're going to do a little bit of adjusting there. Now I'm going to put my stitch length to zero and we're just going to take a couple of stitches in place just to get it started and then I'm going to put it to 1.5 and I have a stitch width of 4.0. And now we are just going to hold this together and let it do its thing. There we go. And now I'm gonna come back here and just hold it taut and let it go. It's okay if your needle is dropping to the right of the cord, it's okay if it's hitting the cord. 
it's fine. I'm just riding the center between where this this um, fabric is and the cord. It's just centered with that knob right there, that knob. And when I get to the corner, I'm going to stop with the needle down into the fabric. I'm going to go really slowly. There we go. Then I'm going to lift my presser foot and I'm going to turn it. We're going to pull this taut, and drop the foot, and let's see. Now I can go a couple more. I can go one more stitch this way and that way. So we're gonna do, I'm gonna let it go. And then we're gonna drop it right back in there. There we go. And now we're gonna turn it. And this looks good. I'm gonna drop that foot. And I'm gonna give it a second and we're gonna turn that corner. And let's go. Now, we are getting ready to get to this end here, so I'm going to get right up close to here and I'm going to snip it. And we're going to turn here. I feel like I can get a little closer and these Kai scissors will allow me to do that. I'm going to cut, ooh, right there. And that's all going to be in the sewing machine, right? And I'm just going to pull this taut again. Put that on the center. And let it go. When we get to this end here, we are going to satin stitch it. So uh, that's going to be somewhere between zero and one. So I'm going to put mine at like 0.5 and I'm just going to let it satin stitch off. threads very carefully and then we're going to add just a little bit of fray check while this corner dries to freeze everything in place because then we'll be making a cut and just snipping it off right here and then I add a little bit more fray check to the front and the back. And then after I clip it, after it dries, then we don't have to worry about it unraveling.
I think this came out so cute. So let me show you how we're going to do it. You are going to take this and we're going to put it that way. And we're going to take this right side up and we're going to start right here. And we're just going to try to bite into the cording, not the fabric, just the cording. And then we're going to rock it, rock it, rock it, rock it, rock it, and hopefully land somewhere around in this area. And then we're just going to close up the sides together, trying to just hit the cording again. And that's how that comes together and does this one. And then for this one here, we've got our hexagon shape. And we've got all the innards. So we're going to lay them out like this, and we're going to just try to hit the cording. Hit the cording, hit the cording, and then, of course, seal it when you get to the edge, and then do the same thing. And just keep adding these on, making sure that we're doing white and black and, you know, making sure that every other. And then when we get them all together, we're going to smash this together and tighten those up, and that's going to be that. It's going to be super duper simple. It comes together really, well, I wouldn't say it comes together fast, but I'd say that it comes together easily it's not super duper difficult this project I'm gonna grab a couple of wonder um, wonder clips and then we can go on over there and start sewing Okay, so now that this part is on right here, we're gonna go on ahead and flip it around. And yes, we're gonna crunch it up a little bit, but that's okay. We are going to do this like that. And we are going to do the exact same thing, but we are going to, like I said, crunch it up a little bit and start just like this and work this bad boy all the way to right here. Just do a sneaky peek to make sure this is right sides to get the, this not the well like, technically it is right sides together. But yeah, we're gonna have to crunch it a little bit. Don't be scared of it. And I'm just trying to get it lined up where I feel comfortable. Just line that up some more and push that down. And we're going to do the stay stitch. Make sure you start with the stay stitch. Put it on zero. And just drop that needle. And I have it on a 1.5 width. And a zero right now. And then I'll take it to 1.5 length. After I've got it stuck down. Same as before. Just trying to catch the cord, not the fabric. And then as you get a little further, do a little adjusting. Take your time. Go nice and slow. This is fun.
All right, now the base is on. Now we have to take these two and match up the sides here. You're gonna match up the top. And you have to fidget with it, of course, because, you know, but you're just gonna match up these sides and sew them together, doing the exact same thing with a super tiny zigzag. You're gonna just try to grab the cord. So for this, we are going to plug this right in here. We're going to do our stay stitch. Then we're going to zigzag and then stay again right here. Okay, so for these, we are going to make sure that we put these in every other order so that we're pulling them properly. And we got to make sure the drip is the right side, is directionally proper. I'm doing a black and white one here. I want this at the bottom. And we're going to put this in the center and we're going to adjust this to a 0 and a 1.5 width and we are going to just zigzag we're going to hold it together and we're going to just zigzag in place for a second we're just trying to grab the trying to grab the um the cording and then we're gonna pull it down to 1.5 and hopefully we're just gonna hit the cording And if you need to, I had to change mine to a 2.0. That 1.5 wasn't getting it the way I wanted it to. So now we're cooking with gas. I need a little more visibility. This worked great for what it was, but now I just need to be able to see. So I'm gonna switch this to my open toe foot and now I can see see. This one's good though, it's on there, it's fine. Not a problem. We're gonna do another one. I'm gonna check to make sure that the roses, the drips are going down and they are. And I'm gonna flip that over and work this side. There we go. Now we can see what's really cooking. So, I'm gonna drop that needle down right where I want it, which is gonna be about right there. Maybe a little bit right there. It's fine. I'm doing some hand cranking work. Yeah, that's what I want right there. Now 
we're going to make it go to 1.5. And just trying to hit that cord. zero perfect add another one on it should be black and white I'm gonna try to put the start and the stops down here at the bottom and it's a nice little pattern because it's already on zero because that's what we stopped So now that all of these have been sewn on together, we are going to scrunch this middle and fold these guys on top of one another like this and line them up, up here at these tops. Make sure I'm scrunching it up the way I want. Nice. And then I'm going to line these up and we're just going to zigzag down this side, doing the exact same thing we did before. Stabilize it, and then going ahead and come on down the side. And I'm going to start at the top, because that's the part that we really want to get right. And I've got them stacked, and I'm just trying to hit this cord and drop off the side. So I'm going to change it to a 1.5 and it's at a zero right now, of course, and we're going to go, it's going to do a stay stitch. I'm cranking just for funsies, good, and I like where everything appears to be going now I'm going to change it to a 1.5 and go all the way down and do the exact same thing just trying to hit that cord So we are all done. This guy came together cute. It's a cutie patootie. So next thing I'll do is put uh, vases in here to make sure that they are held down and then I will put flowers in them. So bet you can't guess what's next. Yeah, I'm thinking flowers will probably be the next thing that I drop. But yeah, just a nice container. It's sturdy. It looks good. It's I like it. I like it. I love these. I think they just, I think they're just so cool. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this and I will catch you guys on the next one.